Hello and welcome to a Vector Tut's Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham and this is a companion piece to my blob brush tutorial from last month. Some of the settings on the blob brush can be kind of confusing, so I thought it would be good to see them in action. So here's the blob brush and I'm going to double click on it to bring up its options. We're going to ignore this top part for now and look at the default brush options at the bottom. You can see that there are three things that you can adjust, the size, the angle, and the roundness. And each of these things has a pull-down menu that lets you determine how this is going to vary. So fixed, of course, would mean there would be no variation. Random means random. Pressure is what I'm going to use because I'm using a tablet with a, with a pen. Stylus, wheel, and tilt, bearing, rotation, those all have to do with other types of pens that you might have, like the Wacom 6D. I just have the regular old school pen, so I'm just going to use pressure on all of these. The size can be adjusted by this slider, or you can type in a number in the field, and the variation can be adjusted on the right. Up here you get a visual representation of what that brush is going to look like. So for example, since I have my variation all the way up to 200 points, that means that the brush can be 200 points wide, or zero, or anything in between. And this is just sort of a little thumbnail that lets you have some feedback on that. The angle can be adjusted in this field, or I can grab this arrow on this thumbnail and give it a whirl to change the angle. And again, I'll use pressure and adjust the variation. The angle setting won't really matter if my brush is 100% round, so I can change that by grabbing these handles and making it more of an oval. And again, when I increase the variation percent, that's represented in the preview. So I'm going to set this to a rather small brush for now, with a maximum variation, and make it 100% round and I don't care about the angle right now. Now we're ready to paint. Notice that in my color panel I have a fill but no stroke. The blob brush uses the stroke color, but if no stroke is selected, it will use the fill color. And you see that once I start painting a stroke, that fill color is now switched to the stroke in the color panel. It can be a bit confusing because while the blob brush is a brush, the end result is a filled shape, but it paints with the stroke color. So I'll paint another stroke, and I'm increasing the pressure on my pen as I go, which gives a nice thin to thick brush stroke. Whenever I paint over a stroke of the same color, the two shapes merge into one, and you can see this better in outline mode. I now have a single filled object. And this is kind of cool. When you're in outline mode, you get to see your blob brush stroke in preview mode at first, and then as you can see, the new stroke merges with the existing shape. Just to reiterate, the blob brush uses the stroke color. I'll pick a new color for the fill, but then when I paint, even though I'm essentially painting a closed path object, the blob brush will still use the color that I have set in my stroke. I'll switch the colors, and now the blob brush will paint with a bright green stroke color, and even though it's painting over the dark green and has a fill of dark green, the new stroke will not merge with the existing dark green object because it has a light green as its stroke in the color panel. Okay, I hope that's not too confusing. Let's make something more interesting now. I'll pick that dark green again, and I still have a small sized brush, and I'm just going to try to vary the pressure as I paint, so I get a more random, organic, painterly shape. And this is merging as I paint, so it'll be one object, and even if there are some gaps or holes in the object, as long as everything is touching, it will end up as one compound path. I'll just add a trunk to my tree, and if you need to erase a part, you can just grab the eraser tool and do that. The eraser and blob brush are a good combination, and if you're working with a graphics tablet and a pen, you don't even have to select the eraser in the tool panel. You can just flip your pen upside down, and it will automatically switch to the eraser, even though the blob brush is still selected in the tool panel. Now I'm going to open up the options again and increase my brush size, and draw the trunk of a tree. And again, the blob brush makes for a looser, organic shape. I'll go back and make a smaller brush. You can also change the brush size on the fly by pressing the right or left bracket keys. But since I'm making such a big change, I use the options box. And I'll choose a different color and draw some knots on this tree. It's supposed to be an aspen tree, if you can't tell, and I wouldn't blame you if you couldn't. Um, now notice that if I go back to the light gray color and try to paint over one of these dark brown shapes, the new shape will not merge with the underlying gray object, because to do so would mess up the stacking order. 
The tree trunk is on the bottom, the dark brown knot is in the middle, and the new shape is on top. So if it were to merge, the new shape would have to jump down below the brown object, and that's really just not possible or even desirable. Now let's say you want to make some gray branches that touch the trunk, but you don't want them to merge. You can set this behavior in the options box by checking merge only with selection. And that means that any new shapes will merge with an existing shape only if it's selected. So for example, I'll draw two new shapes and because my tree trunk is not selected, the new shapes won't merge. But when I select this branch and paint a new shape, it will merge. And this can be handy if you want to retain some flexibility to move or rearrange objects. If this suits your workflow, you can also check Keep Selected in the Options box so you don't have to select a shape every time you want it to merge. Again, it will depend on what you're painting and your personal preference. Here's my finished painting. The blob brush gives you a lot of flexibility to work quickly and intuitively and to stay loose.